before then we had seen Radio I uh, and, uh, and Tazan leading the introduction of private uh, radio broadcasting in Ghana. And then on the TV side, we saw the introduction of uh, the first private TV station was the Crystal TV, which was launched, I think, in 95, 96 or 97, uh, thereabouts. You fast forward to the current states and uh, from a monopoly of one uh, TV station, GTV, one radio station, Radio Ghana, with the most popular news being at 1 p.m. And uh, we're talking to uh, a former minister of state who would say that uh, at 1 p.m. you needed to wait and listen to the news at 1 and be sure that you still have your job uh, before you can have your lunch. Because you might be having lunch and will be told that you have just been fired. So you need to listen to the Radio Ghana news at 1 uh, before you can have your lunch. But here we are today with over 364 radio stations in Ghana. We have radio stations everywhere in Ghana. All the regions have at least 12 to 15 radio stations. Obviously, Greater Accra and Ashanti region make up the bulk of the radio stations that we have. On the television side, we have about 30 free-to-air terrestrial television stations. Those that you need uh, a small area on top of your roof to receive. But for those who wanted to get everywhere at a go, they chose to deploy what we call a satellite technology. And for a satellite, what we call direct to home individual channels, we have over 40. So from one TV station to over 70 television channels, from one radio network to over 364 radio stations in Ghana. This is how far we have come as a country. So today, you can listen to radio anywhere. You can watch TV anywhere. And as technology evolved also, it brought about what we call convergence. A situation where your data, your video, and your voice all met at a particular point. So today, with one particular device, either your mobile phone or your television set, you can do your internet stuff, you can do your radio stuff, you can watch your TV, and news is traveling much more faster today than it's ever been. Unfortunately for us, out of the 364 radio and uh, over 70 television stations, only one TV station is committed to something around education. And that is even operating within Central Region. All television networks that we have are in one of two categories. It's either commercial television station or religious television station. On the commercial side, it's a highly competitive and crowded environment because they are all looking for advertising revenue. So it's highly crowded, it's highly competitive. On the religious side, you and I know the sort of uh, content that we are fed with on, on a daily basis. It is therefore refreshing that Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology has taken this bold step in changing the dynamics of how we watch TV and the content that we are fed. And uh, I like what uh, Honorable Sami Okujoto said that you have really dared to be different. Before we came here, we went to look at the animation uh, studio, if I may call it that way. And uh, for those of us who've had the privilege of working within uh, the broadcasting space, when you enter an environment, you will know 
the seriousness of that institution by the equipment that they have invested in. And when I entered that room, I, I saw the infrastructure and the investments that they have made. And I can say this is top class infrastructure that they have invested in. The sweet part of it is that the information that we're giving is that it costs something like 409,000 USD and uh, 600,000 Ghana CDs or so to put all of this together. So 600,000 Ghana CDs gives us something like 155,000, 160,000. If you add, to, add it to the 400,000, it is around probably uh, 550,000 uh, or $560,000 maximum. I can see that based on what I have seen, and this, we are told, gives us six studios. Am I right? Six studios. It gives us a master control room, an MCR room, capable of delivering three channels, real-time broadcasting at a time, with cameras and uh, with studio mixes and with all the infrastructure that goes with building a broadcasting network. I think the vice chancellor and the team needs a big hand of applause for investing, for investing, I would say just, just 550,000 US dollars and delivering the sort of infrastructure that we are seeing today. Because you go into commercial houses and you wonder, that's why some people ask whether we buy from the same market. And it is an indication of the creativity of the team. How the team is thinking of, how do we deliver this solution at minimum cost? And I think, I think they've done their very best in delivering what we are seeing here with just an amount below one million. I have seen studios built, MCR rooms built, animation studios built for an excess of two million US dollars here in Ghana, commercial entities. And considering that this is an institution being able to deliver what we are seeing today with this amount of money, I say uh, kudos uh, to the team that worked in making this uh, a reality. In 2006, we signed an agreement at the International Telecommunications Union to move from analog broadcasting to digital broadcasting. Today, all the 30 free-to-air broadcasting stations operate independently. So what it means is that each broadcasting house is putting out its own transmitter and putting out its own network to be able to reach you. What the ITU decided was that that is not the best way of utilizing a scarce resource that we call spectrum. And remember that all the 30 free-to-air television stations are assigned frequencies owned by you and I, owned by the states. It's assigned to the broadcasters to be able to broadcast. So each of the stations is operating on an independent frequency band. So sometimes you are in your house, there are 30 television stations, but you can only receive maybe four or five clearly. The rest you can't receive. Because they are broadcasting from different locations. So somebody is broadcasting from the west, somebody from the east, somebody from the north, and it's all coming. So if you are to receive two or three, you must go and realign your aerial, reposition your TV, before you can receive a particular broadcasting station clearly. And when that happens, you lose signal for other stations. That is what analog, analog broadcasting offers us. When you look at the pictures that analog broadcasting offers you, the pictures are not clear. And as a consumer, you don't have a relationship with your broadcasting house. You have a relationship with your telecom provider. You have a relationship with the person who is providing you data services. But you don't have a relationship with the person who is providing you uh, television content. 
So when you go and you switch on, what is on is what you watch. The broadcasters are operating at high cost. And as a nation, we are not utilizing the frequency well. We are not making uh, efficient use of that scarce resource that we have. The International Telecommunications Union in 2006 decided that this way of broadcasting is not the best. Countries can generate revenues through spectrum sale. Broadcasters will be able to deliver proper content, good content, and have some sort of interactivity with their consumers. And consumers will be able to make choices as to what they want to watch at what particular point in time. So a decision was made to move from analog broadcasting to what we call digital broadcasting. Every country and the decision that it makes based on the factors within the environment at a particular point in time. We decided as a nation that we are going to build just one digital terrestrial platform because it brings about efficiency, it results in the consumer having more choices and all of that. So we are in the process of building our digital terrestrial television platform. I am happy to say that Greater Accra region and Ashanti region has already been done. What we are delivering is 40 channels of free-to-air uh, television. What it means is that the existing 30 channels will be migrated to this and there will still be excess capacity for 10 more channels. I can confirm and say to the team here that Tech TV, Tech TV will be assigned one channel. The good news is that putting you on the terrestrial platform gives you automatic, automatic transmission on the digital platform. Today, broadcasters who are broadcasting terrestrially to go satellite, they have to pay for the satellite spectrum and also have to pay for transmitting to you in a terrestrial form. So they pay twice. So if we put you on terrestrial and leave you there, what it means is that you only be able to reach homes that have terrestrial TV reception. Either they have a, a terrestrial or digital TV set, which is costing in excess of 3,000 Ghana CDs, or they've been able to acquire a, a terrestrial digital set-top box, what you call STB, to be able to receive. We believe that that is not the efficient way of reaching all Ghanaians. In fact, the platform that we are building only will be able to reach 90% of Ghanaians. There will be some 10% who will not be able to receive the digital terrestrial TV reception. For those people, we have decided that we are going to offer them the opportunity to receive it through satellite. So what it also means is that we are not only giving you a channel to transmit this terrestrially. We are also going to put you on the direct to home, what we call satellite platform. So that anybody who has a satellite box at home will be able to receive tech TV as well. In addition, tech TV will not, apart from ensuring that they get their content from here, from their broadcasting studio or from their play out to the head end. That is where everything is being broadcast. So you need to find a way of getting the content from here to your head end. Everything that we are going to do for Tech TV, in terms of ensuring that you are on the digital terrestrial platform, ensuring that you are on the satellite platform as well, will be for free. 
So your transmission cost of nine thousand dollars will be saved. And for what we have seen, and for an institution such as this, with the caliber of people who are the helm of affairs, I believe that that nine thousand which should have gone into transmission now being saved will be used in delivering some other value to consumers of the content. I believe so. In moving from analog broadcasting to digital broadcasting, as a government, we needed to make some decisions, some critical decisions. Decisions that we believe will be beneficial for all of us in the long run. And one is around the content that is aired on television. So just last week, we finished the digital terrestrial television policy. Next week, hopefully, the Minister for Communication will be tabling it uh, at Cabinet. And once Cabinet approves, it becomes a policy which will guide all of us as we move with transition from analog broadcasting to digital broadcasting. One of the decisions that we made was around what we watch on TV 